Welcome back to the introduction to matinee. In this video, we are going to continue with the setup of our door example that we demonstrated in the very first intro video that we put together for you. We're going to start off by just doing the setup that is required in order to create the effect that we're going for. And that means we're going to be placing in some static meshes. We're going to add in some lights that we can then go through and animate. And we've got some other elements we have to add too, such as special types of materials intended for animation. And just a reminder, in case in case you've forgotten, the setup that Zach's talking about are the lights that are going to be at the top of the door frame itself that's going to be toggling from red to green when the door opens. That's right. Light, a little light mesh placed right here, and there'll be a little dynamic light that we'll put right about center of the door. Okay. So uh, for starters, let's bring in the mesh that we're going to use to represent the light fixture. I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, generic browser, and this mesh is located under the LT Lights package. Let me see if that's already loaded in, and it doesn't look like it, but I should probably show all my resource types before I uh, make any final decisions decisions. So let's see, LT Light, there we go, and we have the LT Light SM Octagon Bulb. <laughs> the shortest name in Unreal Ed. And actually, it's, it's, long, it's all Octagon Light Bulb, but that's okay. Uh, that's fine. That's exactly what we need, and what I'm going to do is, with that selected, I'm going to right-click on the underside of the door frame and choose Add Actor, Static Mesh, Place, uh, like so. Now, notice I did not add an Interp Actor. That is because even though this uh, well, this object is not going to be dynamic in and of itself. No, it's not. The material that will in eventually be applied to it will be dynamic. But since this object itself is not dynamic, we're just going to use a plain Jane static mesh. Okay, let's get this positioned a little bit better than it is. Notice, uh, if you look down the corner of my screen, my drag grid is currently set to 4, so I've got a lot of control here. Uh, let me, I guess I could close out my generic browser. It's just getting in the way at this point. And we'll set that right about there. Let's also scale things down. Let's try 0.5. That doesn't look bad. Nah. And we could maybe pull that up. Just There we go. So now it's just kind of hanging out from the underside of the, uh, the doorway. And that looks pretty good. Now, that's just the mesh. That is not going to uh, be the final material. As we can see, this is kind of a bluish material. And what we were going for was a red effect. So we need access to the material that is currently applied to this mesh. Because that is the goal. We're right. going to change the material. And then we're going to make it such that we can control the new material that we're creating through matinee. That's absolutely right. Now, we could just create our own uh, material from scratch and not worry about the one that is applied to this mesh. But I just want to show you something. It's just a way to work some new stuff in. If I select this mesh and then open up my browsers, we can go to the referenced assets browser. And this will show me all of the assets that's referenced by this actor. So we start off with static mesh actor number six. If I expand this, let's go ahead and scoot this over so I can give you a, a clearer picture of everything that's being shown. We have the default, which isn't going to show us anything all that particularly useful. We have the particular uh, instance of the static mesh component, and there's a lot of those in the level. If we expand this, we get the actual static mesh that is being referenced, which as we saw earlier was SLT light SM octagon light bulb. If we expand this, we actually get the material. It's under the UN MISC package, bsp.materials group, and the name of the material is m underscore un underscore misc underscore bsp underscore fluorescent light 01. Flowerescent. Flowerescent, that's right. <laughs> okay, so we won't get on anybody for spelling. Uh, however, just uh, for your own uh, edification, if we expand this, we start to get into the various uh, aspects that make up the element. We see the, ma I'm sorry, that make up the material. Material, yeah, there's a. We see the physical material, and yeah. then we can see the actual material expression. Multiply? Yeah, there's a multiply node in there, apparently. But really, what we're interested in is this particular package. So let's go get it. I'm going to jump back to the generic browser, and we need to go under UN MISC. Let's just double check and see if that has been loaded, and it looks like it is. And lo and behold, we have the UN MISC BSP fluorescent, uh, fluorescent light 01. Now, I do not want to change this material. This material came along with Unreal Tournament 3, and I don't want to make any changes to original uh, content in any form. So what I'm going to do is play it safe and make a duplicate of this material. So let's right-click on it, and we'll choose Duplicate. And I'll create this in a new package. Let's call this uh, Zach Matinee Materials. And it came in with all the other naming in there. So now if I scroll down, we have Zach Matinee Materials. I'm immediately going to right-click on this and rename it. <laughs> and let's put this in a different group. We'll just call this the Materials Group. And uh, for the name, we'll just say Matt underscore. And this will be Fluorescent. <laughs> 
light. And there okay. you go. And this actually shows you an extra feature, too. It shows you you can rename, and that will also change the organization of your groups and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Pretty handy. Now, here's the catch. Uh, first off, let's open up this material and just take a look at what makes it tick. But there's now, some things we need to know. Yeah, fortunately, it's a very simple material. We've oh, yeah, well, it's very... just a few things. Fortunate for me, anyway. So, uh, <laughs> I guess so. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring everything really close together so we can get a quick idea of what's going on. We just have a bluish color that's being multiplied by the number 15 and plugged into a missive. It doesn't really get much simpler than that. But there are two things we need to keep in mind here. One is that this is a constant three vector. If, in fact, if I drag another one in, you'll see that they do coincide. It's just three numbers along the top. That's exactly what we have here. Because it is a constant, it is intended never to change. Meaning constant. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a problem. We need, we need something that we can change, that we can reach into. To have some sort of uh, attribute that we can change, we need to bring in a parameter. Anytime you see the word parameter here inside your material expressions, that is some sort of object that is used to reach into the material and make some sort of dynamic change. And you could reach in through Kismet. You could reach in through Matinee. You could even reach in through Unreal Script, though that's not the kind of thing that I'll be showing you uh, right now. Let's go ahead and bring in a vector parameter. And vector, of course, meaning that it has uh, three full values for R, G, and B. And the really cool thing about this is it's got a color picker, which makes me very happy. Let's go ahead and nuke this blue color. We just don't need it. That's going to give us an error until we plug our new vector parameter in. And let's choose the color we want. So we'll select our node, come down to default value, and I'll click on the little magnifying glass, which, by the way, note the tooltip which says uh, show generic browser. That is not what it shows. Okay, the tooltip didn't want to show up for me. It's, it was embarrassed. I drew attention to it. <laughs> so I'm going to choose red, and we'll saturate that most of the way, and we'll click OK and see what this looks like. So we still get the big white spot in the middle, very lightsaber-ish, but uh, let's go ahead. <laughs> lightsaber. Yeah, change that up just a little bit. Yeah, so we'll bring that down just a little bit and click OK. So starting to turn a little pink, maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Maybe just, I don't know. I, no, we'll leave it just like that. Sorry, I'm picky. I think okay. we'll go ahead and go with that. Besides, I can always change it later. It's not really that big of a deal. Now, we're almost done here, but we have one thing left to do. One very important thing if you plan on dealing with this parameter from outside of the material editor. Absolutely right, and that is to give this parameter some sort of name that we can use to call it. So uh, instead of leaving this set to none, we're going to call this light color. Like so. That is vital. If you remember, if you forget everything else I show you, remember that if you're going to use a parameter, you've got to give it a name. That's right. So keep that in mind. Now, with that, we can go ahead and close out of here. I'm just going to hit close and then yes to do you want to save the changes as opposed to applying and then closing. So we have our matte fluorescent light. But this in and of itself is not enough. We cannot animate this material. Materials are compiled before the game actually runs, and you cannot change that material once the game has started. However, there is another, I guess, type of material, kind of a pseudo-material, if you will, that you can change, and it's called a material instance constant. And the purpose of a material instance constant is to use a base material, a parent material, use the information from that material, and create an animatable copy of it. Uh, That's a general overview anyway. So what I'm going to do is right-click over here in outer space in my package, and we're going to create a new material instance constant. So we'll left-click here, and we are back in Zach Matinee Materials. We're in our Materials group, which is good. And what did I name the other one? It was Matte Fluorescent Light. So what I'm going to do is Matte Const underscore uh, Fluorescent Light. I think that's right. (laughs) Okay, so we get this big editor window that pops up, and it's actually so big it's kind of scary. So I'm going to shrink this down to something that doesn't frighten me quite so much. And we have a very simple user interface here. We've got a little toolbar that allows us to see a grid. So you know, we can navigate this by, by, if I drag with the left mouse button, we're rotating around. Drag with right mouse and we're zooming in and out. I can turn the grid on and off. If I want to change the uh, type of geometry we're using for uh, display, I can do that. If I want to bring in a selected static mesh, I could do that too. So if I wanted to, I could go get our little light fixture and bring it in here and see what it looked like. But I'm not. (laughs) We can uh, set this to a real-time viewport and then show all material parameters. Now, jumping down from here, we have a properties window, and this is where all the magic really happens. First off, it's going to ask for a parent material. That is going to end up being our matte fluorescent light. 
Very important. You have to assign this here. So let's go ahead and assign this in, and boom, our material immediately changes and looks just like our original material. It is now an instance of this parent material. Don't worry that it's not updated back over in the generic browser. Actually, that'll happen as soon as we close. There you go. So, yeah. So, if you need that to happen... Now, I'm going to shrink this back down, because, again, the big size is just frightening the daylight out of me. All right. So, down from here, you'll see that we have several lists of parameters. And what these are, are different data type possible parameters that we could have added into our material. By default, the material instance constant doesn't know that uh, we're not going to ever use a scalar or a static component mask and so on and so forth. So it gives you an, an available list of all of these, and you'll notice that like scalar is empty. Why? We have no scalar parameters in our material. Uh, so is static uh, component mask empty, and static switch is empty, and texture parameter. These are all empty because we didn't put those into our material, but we did put in a vector parameter. So let's open door number three. And when we expand, there you go. Actually, I think it's door number five, but uh, who's counting? You know, I'm just Who, being... Who's mean. counting? <laughs> all right, so now we can see the light color. We can change... Which was the parameter name we assigned back in the material editor. That's right. Actually, that is so important because if you expand this and you notice that this is still named none, close this window, go back into your material, n add a name, and then open this back up. That's right. You need that name to be there. That's going to become so important once we get around to matinee here in just a few minutes. Okay, so at this point, you could create a new color to lay on the surface of this instant. So, for example, I could click on the show generic browser button and open up the color picker. Let's maybe make this, I don't know, uh, let's not choose that color, maybe green. And uh, so the thing didn't update just yet. We could close it. And, oh, we're not getting a change. But why? Well, that's because we have not activated the ability to change this. Uh, we have a little checkbox here. And until we check this, uh, Unreal is not going to listen for any changes. So just a, a quick point there. So now if I set this to green and click OK, boom, there we go. So the whole thing updates. So we can have uh, different laser sword colors for our laser swords. But now, we're working on lights, Zach. We're, we're, I'm sorry, I That's get so right. distracted. Now, if you need this to be back to your original red, notice you have a little reset button over here on the far left. If you click on that, it's going to go back to its original color, and you might have to update the viewport to uh, make that change. Now, down here at the bottom, you can see the original uh, parent material that we're using and the current material as well. Just a little information window down there that uh, I don't use that often. So <laughs> let's go ahead and close this up, and we are done. We have our material instance constant created. The last thing we need to do is assign this material instance constant to this static mesh. So we'll select the static mesh, double-click it to open up its properties. Let me go ahead and collapse everything down for starters. I'll take the static mesh actor, open up the static mesh component, fire all the way down to the bottom, and we see under the rendering tab the material section, which currently has no materials in it. We need to create a new material. These materials are used to override the material that was applied to the static mesh to begin with. So if I click the little Add Item button, we get a new slot into which I can add a material. In this case, I'm going to select the material instance constant from the generic browser, and then click the Use Current Selection in Browser button, and ta-da! Now, if we get everything out of the way, our light has now turned red, and everybody is happy. Or at least mostly happy, there's still one thing missing, and that is the fact that uh, even though we have this really nice, red-hot, glowing fixture it's up underneath... It's not emitting any light. It's not emitting any light, yeah. It looks like a bad laser sword effect from an old movie from the 70s. And so uh, we need to add in some sort of a light to take the place of the emission. So uh, let's go ahead and open up the actor class browser. This is a light that we are going to change values inside of um, at matinee. I was going to say kismet, but the, it's actually changing in matinee. But that makes it a dynamic actor, so we can't just use a regular light. That's right. So let's expand light. I will grab a point light toggleable. And we'll close this out. Now let's just right click on the floor and add point light toggleable here. And we'll move this up into the air. And I got a lot of properties I want to change. First off, I want to put this just about dead center on the door. And Maybe pull it forward just mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, the reason being is you will notice after a little experimentation and having to rebuild lights that sometimes you will lose the light casting ability to uh, land on your doors. In fact, you don't see any light hitting the door right now. Gee, I wonder why. That's one of the first things we need to change. <laughs> if you think back to some of the earlier videos I mentioned uh, when we were talking about the lift that You're was in the floor. on it. Oh, yeah, no, there it is. It's over in the other room. How do you know? You'll notice this guy is not lit either. That's because only lights that are broadcasting on the dynamic channel will actually strike movers. So we need to take this 
light, open up its properties, and uh, let's close everything up real quick. Let's uh, expand out its lights, expand the light component, and if we locate the lighting channels, we'll expand those too, and if we take a look, dynamic is currently unchecked. So boom, now we are broadcasting true dynamic light that can hit dynamic objects, such as movers. So that's what we need. Now there are other properties we need to change too, so let me go ahead and close down uh, lighting channels. And the lighting color while we're right there at it. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do the color while we're staring at it. Let's uh, set this to a value of red. And uh, I, I don't usually go with full saturation because, well, it just usually looks cheesy. So we'll desaturate a bit. And it still looks like a very vivid red light. Mm -hmm. um, then other things you might want to change, maybe increase the fall-off exponent. I'm going to try to double it to four. And that should really tighten up the amount of red light that's washing over our scene. And I'll go through a quick autosave real quick while I rotate around. And if really from here, it'd just be a matter of, you know, digging through and figuring out the preference that you want. I might take my radius and pull it in just a little bit. And uh, let's, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's my radius. So what we want to do is take the radius and bring it down to, say, a value of, oh, I don't know, maybe 512. So we'll select that. 512. Boom. So it keeps it pretty tight, keeps it from really traveling too far across the room. I'm... I don't know. I might want to, to travel across the room later. We'll decide. Yeah. We, we won't worry about it right now. Yeah. So there's our light. There is our, uh, our light mesh. We have our material instance constant in place. There's really only one more thing that we need, but I'm going to save that as a surprise for when we actually set Ooh. up our matinee sequence. A surprise. That's right. So this is where I get to actually... I've been waiting like throughout this, whole, this whole series to do the whole... But wait... There's more. Do you want to go ahead and duplicate these? Actually, it's a really good idea. And then we can end this video with the rebuilding process started and so they don't have to wait through it. That's right. So uh, let's go ahead and select both of our objects. We have the light and our mesh. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and we'll just drag those over like so. And I think that's the same on the other side. We'll just pull this one little lamp out just a little bit and further. Push the light up above in just a tad because it's right at Is the it edge. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit too far, so yeah, something like go. that. Okay, so now we have our lights on both sides. I can't think of anything else we would want to do. So uh, we'll go ahead and off-camera, we'll rebuild our lighting, but that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.